Hello students, welcome to Readman Prep Academy channel. Today in Environmental Issues Part 2, we shall discuss about forestry, deforestation, afforestation and alien invasive species. Forestry, there are two types, agroforestry and social forestry. What is agroforestry? Agroforestry is an integration of trees, crops and livestock on the same plot of land. The main objective is on the interaction among them. Example, intercropping of two or more crops between different species of trees and shrubs which results in high yielding and reducing the operation cost. This intentional combination of agriculture and forestry has varied benefits including increased biodiversity and reduced erosion. Some of the major species cultivated in commercial agroforestry include Casuarina, Eucalyptus, Malay Bember, Teak and Kadambu trees which were among the 20 species identified as commercial timber. They are of great importance to wood based industries. What are the practices of agroforestry? Alde cropping, silver pasture, forest farming, riparian forest buffers and windbreaks. So we have to put the right tree in the right location for the right reason. What are the benefits of agroforestry? It is an answer to the problem of soil and water conservation and also to stabilize the soil, salinity and water table, reduce landslide and water runoff problem. Nutrient cycling between species improves and organic matter is maintained. Trees provide microclimate for crops and maintain oxygen and carbon dioxide balance. Atmospheric temperature and relative humidity. Suitable for dry land where rainfall is minimum and hence it is a good system for alternate land use pattern. Multipurpose tree varieties like acacia are used for wood pulp, tanning, paper and firewood industries. Agroforestry is recommended for the following purposes like the farm forestry for the extension of forest, mixed forestry, shelter belts and linear strip plantation. To sum up the benefits of agroforestry, better crops and increased production. Carbon is pulled out from the atmosphere and stored in the trees and soil. So the soil becomes nutrient rich soil. Biodiversity improves. Water is conserved in the soil. Creation of microclimates as by protecting plants from intense sun, rain and winds. Food and income security. Nutrient dense foods for communities. Now, rehabilitation of degraded forests and recreation forestry helps in the production of woody plants combined with pasture. This is referred as silver pasture system. The trees and shrubs may be used primarily to produce fodder for livestock or they may be grown for timber, fuel, wood and fruit or to improve the soil. Silver pasture is an agroforestry system that can be economically viable, provide wildlife habitat, be environmentally sustainable, produce livestock and timber, have aesthetic and recreational value, reduce wildfire risk. This system is classified into two categories, protein bank, or live fence of fodder trees and hedges. Protein bank in this various multi-purpose trees are planted in and around the farmlands and range lands mainly for fodder production. Example Acacia nilotica, Albizia lebec, Azadirashta indica, Glyricidia sepium, Sesbania grandiflora. So main fodder agroforestry system objectives to provide seasonal supplement like fast growing Rate is should be present in the plants after being grazed. High productivity of leaves, pods, availability in dry season. Easy and cheap to harvest. Drought for the bank could be produced like the nutritious leaves of pods. Ability to recover from the periodic harvest. Ability to coppice or reshoot. Drought tolerance. Long lived plants should be planted. Protein supplement. High protein leaves or browse high protein seeds of pods, rich nutrient pods of fruits, easy and cheap to harvest. Now what is this life fence of fodder trees and hedges? Various fodder trees and hedges are planted as a life fence to protect the property from stray animals or other biotic influences. Example, Glyricidia sepium, Sesbania grandiflora, Erythrina species and Acacia species. Here you can see the fence being formed 
by Glyvesidia sepium plants. Now what is social forestry? It refers to the sustainable management of the forest by local communities with the goal of climate, carbon sequestration, change mitigation, depollution, deforestation, forest restoration and providing indirect employment opportunity for the youth. The need of social forest in India Government forest areas that are close to human settlements have been degraded over the years due to human activities needed to be afforested. Trees were to be planted in and around the agricultural fields. Dominant rural population that still depends largely on fire root, that depends largely on fuel wood and other biomass for their cooking and heating. Social forestry also aims at raising plantations by the common man so as to meet these demands of fuel, wood, cooking and heating. Through the social forestry scheme, the government has involved community participation as part of a drive towards afforestation and rehabilitating the degraded forest and common lands. Social forestry refers to the management of forest and afforestation on barren lands with the purpose of helping the environmental, social and rural development and benefits. Forestry program is done to benefit the people and the participation of the people should be present. Trees are grown outside the forest by government and public organizations to reduce the pressure on the forest. In order to encourage tree cultivation outside the forest, tree cultivation in private lands was implemented in the state from 2007 to 2008 to 2011 to 2012. Here you can see the barren hilly area in 2001, which was developed into a forest by afforestation in 2019. You can see the picture. It was implemented by carrying out block planting and intercrop planting with profitable tree species like teak, cashewina, Ailanthus, silver oak, etc., in the farming lands, and by a free supply of profitable tree species for planting in the buns. The tank foreshore plantations have been a major source of firewood in Tamil Nadu. The 32 forestry extension centers provide technical support for tree growing in rural areas in Tamil Nadu. These centers provide quality tree seedlings like thornless bamboo, cashewinas, teak, neem. Melia dubia, grafted tamarind and nelly etc. in private lands and creating awareness among students by training and camps. What are the major activities of forestry extension centers? Training on tree growing methods, publicity and propaganda regarding tree growing, formation of demonstration plots, raising and supply of seedlings on subsidy, awareness creation among school children and youth about the importance of forest through training and camps. Here in this image you can see the forest extension center in a village and in the image on the lower side you can see the training being given for planting the trees in the forest and the development of the forest. Now what is deforestation? Deforestation is one of the major contributors to enhance greenhouse effect and global warming. The conversion of forested area into a non-forested area is known as deforestation. Forests provide us many benefits including goods such as timber, paper, medicine, industrial products. They produce oxygen and absorb carbon dioxide. Moderate temperature and rainfall. They also provide us shelter and warmth. What are the causes of deforestation? The conversion of forest into agricultural plantation and livestock ranching is a major cause of deforestation. Logging for timber. You can see the image below on the left side. And the developmental activities like road construction, electric tower lines and dams. You can see in the image the development of the road in a forest area. Overpopulation, industrialization, urbanization and increased global needs. You can see the construction or urbanization on the hilly slopes in between the forest area. Effects of deforestation, burning of forest would release stored carbon. A negative impact just opposite of carbon sequestration. The natural forests capture the carbon dioxide. Deforestation releases carbon dioxide. You can see in this image, the intact forest ecosystems capture the carbon in the vegetation and the soil. The clearing and the burning of the forest releases carbon dioxide that had been stored in the vegetation and the soil. Conversion of the forest into pastures, agriculture and urban areas produce lot of ongoing emissions. Regrowing the forest will capture and accumulate the carbon slowly over the decades. Trees and plants bind the soil particles. The removal of forest cover increases the soil erosion and decreases the soil fertility. 
deforestation in dry areas leads to the formation of deserts. Here in this image you can see that excessive tree cover where the forest recovery rate should be high increases the soil fertility and decreases the soil erosion. In the image on the right side you can see that the loss of forest can cause soil erosion rate increase and loss of soil fertility. Other agents of soil erosion may be because of water runoff, floods, water table decrease and wind. The amount of runoff water increases the soil erosion and also creates flash flooding thus reducing the moisture and humidity. The alteration of local precipitation patterns leading to drought conditions in many regions. It triggers adverse climatic conditions and alters the water cycle in the ecosystem. In this image you can see the deforestation results in the cumulative deforestation causes less evapotranspiration which results in less rainfall. Less rainfall causes increased drought. Increased drought again will cause a deforestation. So this cycle will go on if we destroy the forest. Deforestation decreases the biodiversity significantly as their habitats are disturbed and disruption of natural cycles occur. Loss of livelihood for forest dwellers and rural people. Increased global warming and account for one third of the total carbon dioxide emission. Loss of life support resources, fuel, medicinal herbs and wild edible fruits. So to sum up the effects of deforestation, increased wildfires, loss of biodiversity, increased atmospheric carbon dioxide, increased drought, disruption of the water cycle, increased flooding. Now let us move on to afforestation. What is afforestation? Afforestation is planting of trees where there was no previous tree coverage and the conversion of non-forested lands into forests by planting suitable trees to retrieve the vegetation. What is the difference between the afforestation and deforestation? Afforestation is the establishment of a forest or stand of trees forestation in an area where there was no previous tree cover. Deforestation, removal of a forest or stand of trees where the land is thereafter converted to a non-forest use. Example of afforestation, slopes of dams are forested to reduce water runoff, erosion and siltation. It can also provide a range of environmental services including carbon sequestration and water retention. The man who single-handedly created a dense forest, Jadav Molai Payang, born 1963, is an environmental activist, has single-handedly planted a forest in the middle of the barren wasteland. This forest man of India has transformed the world's largest river island Majuli located on one of the India's major rivers the Brahmaputra into a dense forest home to rhinos, deers, elephants, tigers and birds and today his forest is larger than the central park. Former vice chancellor of Jawaharlal Nehru University Sudhir Kumar Sopori named Jadav Payang as forest man of India in the month of October 2013. He was honored at the Indian Institute of Forest Management during their annual event coalescence. In 2015, he was honored with Padma Shri, the fourth highest civilian award in India. He received honorary doctorate degree from Assam Agricultural University and Kaziranga University for his contributions. You can see this man, the environmental activist Chadav Payang started planting trees on a barren Indian sandbar in 1979 when he was 16 years old. Today he lives in the forest he planted which covers over 1300 acres and is home to rhinos, tigers, deer, apes and elephants. What are the objectives of forestation? To increase the forest cover, planting more trees, increases oxygen production and air quality. Rehabilitation of degraded forest to increase the carbon fixation and reducing carbon dioxide from atmosphere. Here you can see the image on the left side where it is a desert and the desert is developed to forest by afforestation. Raising bamboo plantations. Mixed plantations of minor forests produce and medicinal plants. Regeneration of indigenous herbs and shrubs. Awareness creation monitoring and evaluation to increase the level and availability of water table or groundwater and also reduce the nitrogen leaching in the soil and nitrogen contamination of drinking water thus making it pure not polluted with nitrogen nature aided artificial regeneration here in this image you can see that excess growing of trees 
causes evapotranspiration, preventing the excess runoff. And there is recharge of groundwater and the water table can increase. What are the achievements of afforestation? Degraded forests were restored. Community assets like overhead tanks, bore wells, hand pumps, community halls, libraries, etc. were established. Environmental and ecological stability was maintained, conserved biodiversity, wildlife and genetic resources. Involvement of community, especially women in the forest management. Now, let us move on to the alien species or invasive species. What is this? Invasion of alien or introduced species disrupts the ecosystem processes threatens the biodiversity, reduce the native herbs, thus reducing the ecosystem services or benefits. During eradication of these species, the chemicals used increases the greenhouse gas. Slowly, they alter the ecosystem, microclimate and nature of the soil and make it unsuitable for native species and create human health problems like allergy, thus resulting in local environmental degradation and loss of important local species. According to the World Conservation Union, invasive alien species are the second most significant threat to biodiversity after habitat loss. The invasive alien species, how they impact? They impact by competition, grazing, predation, parasitism, hybridization, biofouling, poisoning, flammability, disease transmission and interactions with other invasive alien species. What are the outcomes of the impact? Environmental outcome? Modification of hydrology, native species declines, soil erosion, primary production alteration, plant and animal health affection, and habitat degradation. What are the socio-economic impact? Agricultural damage, reduced access to water, infrastructure damage, human health damage, damage to forestry, reduction in tourism. So what is this invasive species? A non-native species to the ecosystem of the country under consideration that spreads naturally, interferes with the biology and existence of the native species, poses a serious threat to the ecosystem and causes economic loss. It is established that a number of invasive species are an accidental introduction through ports via air or sea. Some research organizations import germ plasma of wild varieties through which it also gets introduced. Alien species with edible fruits are usually spread by birds. What is the mode of invasion of the alien species? What are the various pathways? The transportation, boat, hull or trailer, ship ballast, water, cargo transportation, living industry, aquaculture, aquarium and pet trade and live seafood trade. Miscellaneous methods natural spread of established populations, ecosystem disturbance, intentional release, and biological control. So invasive species are fast growing and are more adapted. They alter the soil system by changing the litter quality, thereby affecting the soil community, soil fauna, and the ecosystem processes. Here, the exotic species can cause change in the soil community composition, can cause plant community composition change, or ecosystem process and properties are also changed. All these are interchangeable and reversible. It has a negative impact on the decomposition in the soils by causing stress to the neighboring native species. Some of the alien species which cause environmental issues that will be discussed here are Ecornia crassipes and Prosopis juliflora. Ecornia crassipes, it is an invasive weed native to South America. It was introduced as an aquatic ornamental plant which grows faster throughout the year. Its widespread growth is a major cause of biodiversity loss worldwide. It affects the growth of phytoplanktons and finally changing the aquatic ecosystem. It also decreases the oxygen content of the water bodies which leads to eutrophication. It poses a threat to human health because it creates a breeding habitat for disease causing mosquitoes, particularly Anopheles, and snails with its free-floating dense roots and semi-submerged leaves. It also blocks sunlight entering the deep and the waterways hampering the agriculture, fisheries, recreation and hydropower. Here in this image you can see how the lake is being covered with the cornea crassipes. Now Prosopis juliflora. Prosopis juliflora is an invasive species native to Mexico and South America. It was first introduced in Gujarat to counter desertification and later on in Andhra Pradesh Tamil Nadu as a source of firewood. It is an aggressive colonizer and as a consequence the habitats are rapidly covered by this species. 
Its invasion reduces the cover of native medicinal herbaceous species. It is used to arrest the wind erosion and stabilize sand dunes on coastal and desert areas. It can absorb hazardous chemicals from soil and it is the main source of charcoal. Here in this image you can see the plant Prosopis juriflora. So today in environmental issues part 2 we discussed about forestry, deforestation, afforestation, alien invasive species. Thank you. Kindly subscribe, like, share and comment our channel Read Med Prep Academy. Register in our website www.readmedprepacademy.com for UG and PG MCQs for your medical entrance examinations. Our Facebook ID Read Med Prep Academy. Our email is readmedprepacademy at gmail.com. Our Instagram is readmedprepacademy. Kindly post your questions in the comment box. We will reply with appropriate answers regarding the lecture. Thank you very much.